Okay, you guys, how about some plum jam? Or plum jelly. If you prefer plum jelly, I'm gonna be doing a video on plum jelly as well. Just look in the description box below and I'll have a link to that. But my super awesome cousin hooked me up with a gigantic amount of plums and so I have plenty enough to do a video on both for you guys. So let's go, let's get started. And just a quick heads up in case you watched my last video and you didn't like the glass cutting board, don't worry, it's gone. I have a new one, no more glass cutting board. So, you're welcome. One more quick disclaimer. I'm going to use sugar and sure gel. So, I know a lot of people are like, you don't need that much sugar, you don't need to use pectin. I like to use them both. It makes my jam and jelly set good. If you don't like those, I know there's more videos on YouTube that shows you how to make this without sugar and without pectin. Just my two cents. First, the first thing you wanna do is wash your fruit. So I'm gonna take some of this fruit out, put it in my colander, Give it a good wash and I'll be right back. Okay, so after your plums are all nice and washed, you want to pit them, which means you want to separate the seed on the inside or the pit, some people call it the pit, from the actual plum itself. Now there are some recipes that actually use the pit because it has natural pectin in it, but also the skin has natural pectin in it, plus I'm going to be using sheer gel. So I'm not gonna keep the pit, but the best way to get it is just slice down the middle. You'll feel a, you get to a hard spot, go around, and it should kind of come apart pretty easily from there. So we're just gonna pop, this is what is called the pit or the seed, and you just kind of pop it right out and discard it or if you're gonna keep it and boil it down i'll tell you how to do that too and then just chop your plum up you can leave the skins on they're gonna boil down and they're real thin anyway you can leave them on i chopped them up to about that size right there see in the hand you can make them smaller or bigger it doesn't matter because they're gonna turn to mush anyway Okay, you want to keep chopping until you have 64 ounces, which is about eight cups of chopped plums. So let me go ahead and finish chopping these up. I won't bore you by making you watch the whole thing. All 64 ounces or eight cups of chopped plums and put them in a large stock pot. I like to use a bigger pot than you would think necessary because when it starts boiling and it starts splashing, I don't like it to bubble and tip me. And you're gonna add one half a cup of water and set it to boil. five minutes we are going to add in our pectin I'm using six tablespoons of pectin let me show you the pectin that I'm using it is the classic pectin by Ball. you picked that up at Walmart and I'm also gonna add one half a teaspoon of butter it's always kind of hard to get it off <laughs> all right there it goes and we're gonna give that a stir and bring it up to the full bowl, so I'm going to turn the heat up. Get a 
into a full rolling bowl, which is a bowl that doesn't go away whenever you stir it, which is where we're at, you want to add your sugar. And this is where I'm going to get the hate mail. You're adding eight cups of sugar. I know, I know. I'm ready for it. I also like to add a tablespoon of cinnamon. Just gives it a little added bonus flavor. And it smells delicious. And about four pumps of lemon juice, which is about a teaspoon. Now, bring this back up to a rolling bowl, because once you added all this sugar in there, it really lost its boil. So bring it back up to a rolling boil and boil for one minute. what a rolling, a rolling bowl looks like. This is a boil that it keeps bubbling even though I'm stirring it, it is not calming it down. So now that I have it here, you want to boil it at this rate for one minute. All right, it's been boiling for one minute, so I'm gonna turn my heat off and it's time to get this ladled into our pre-sterilized jars. If you have any foam at the top before you ladle into your jars, just kind of use a metal spoon and scoop that out first. It won't hurt anything, but it doesn't look pretty sitting at the top of your jars. I have my jars already pre-sterilized over here. I'm just going to go ahead and fill them up. to within a quarter of an inch from the top. So I'm just going to use my little tool here and see if we're there. And nope, we've got a little ways to go. Let's check again. Ooh. We are right at it. So let's go ahead and wipe this lid clean. It's important that you wipe the lid the rim of the jar before you put the seal on it. So I've got a paper towel here, just dipped in a little bit of vinegar. I'm just gonna go around the top and make sure all of that is very clean. If not, you may not get a good seal, which could lead to your jam that you just worked so hard on spoiling and making everybody sick and not being edible. So just make sure your lids are very clean before you put your seal on. I'm going to continue filling up the rest of these. Alright, my jars are filled and it is time to put them in the canner. I've already got my water boiling. I've got it filled up high enough to where when I get the jars in there, they will have at least two inches of water over the top of them. Okay, our timer has gone off and it is time to get these babies out of the canner. You're going to want to use gloves because this rack gets really hot pulling it up. size jars out of that batch all right well I hope you guys really enjoyed the video if you did re remember to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to stay in touch with me and get notified every time I upload a new video like I said if you prefer jelly over the jam I also have another video on how to make plum jelly so just look in the description box below I'll have a link to it and you can go look at that one too thanks for watching you guys